I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Convertible antenna. Now, you guys that run VHF, this is mostly for you because uh, if you want a portable antenna for VHF, there you go. <laughs> Doesn't look pretty, but it works. Take that and throw a string over the tape tree and haul it, haul it up in the tree. It's a quarter wave with ground plane. It works like a champ. I've run, I've carried this in my car for probably 40 years, maybe. Uh, so you can you, you can look at it and see how it, it's real easy to build. Now I've got a couple others here that are a little more difficult. No, that's not that. Uh, well, they were in here. Oh, maybe they. Yeah, maybe they. They got dumped. My, my little 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 cart got dumped over here. Yeah, here we go. Got dumped over in the back of my truck. Uh, coming. Probably because I was driving too fast. Uh, Here, here we have a J pole made out of 300 ohm uh, ladder line, TV cable, whatever you want to call it. And again, that's something you can haul up in the tree, and uh, it works. It works well. Um, I'm not going to unroll this one, but this is a vertical dipole. Well, I am going to unroll it. Partially, anyway. Uh, no, I take it back. This is a set. This is a second. That's made out of TV. That made out of TV cable. 600 ohm TV cable. This. This one is made out of, this is made out of 300 ohm ladder line. Okay. So those are, those are the, those are your, your verticals that you could use on two meters, 440. And then this one is, um, this one is a vertical, vertical dipole. And what I've done is I've taken the, center conductor 19 inches and taken the the uh, shield and folded it back down the coax and put heat shrink over to make the dipole so this is a vertical dipole for two meters so let's do it on a 50 foot piece of coax and you've got your emergency antenna for anything keeping the back of your keeping your trunk whatever um, so those those are here what do you look at in case, in case you want to know what these are, this so I don't mess up your desk. <laughs> uh, huh? I was thinking as a new antenna. No, no. By the way, somebody gave me a, a G5 RV, used G5 RV. Somebody's going to take it home with them tonight. Okay? So, so anyway, that's all I'm going to talk about. That's about all I'm going to talk about on for two meters. The rest of the stuff I'm going to talk about tonight, and these will be down here for you. If you want to grab, somebody wants to grab them, hand pass them around and look at. The next, ver the next vertical that we're going to need is is uh, for HF. Now, you don't need anything special. It's just a wire up in the tree, comes down, hooks into your radio. One, and then the, the coax coming from to and from your radio should uh, uh, did I bring them I thought I brought one one piece here that was no I didn't I guess man you put all this stuff together and you end up getting something you always end up getting something uh, but anyway uh, hang on 
Yeah, I've got one right here. No, that's well, that's for a dipole. Anyway, you just, you just split your coax out like this, and you put this to the to the vertical, and this goes to ground. Okay, and that's your ground, and that's your vertical. Now, if you want, you can do that. Hook at the ground, hook the hook, hook at the ground, uh, and I use. Like for instance, this this is what I built up for for, for vertical. Okay, this goes to ground. The wire goes to here, and the coax, of course, plugs in there. Okay, now you can do the same thing. If you don't want to do all this, you can bring your wire down with an insulator and spread it in, do your coax. But you're gonna have to have a little adapter like this. Okay, and this little adapter. This little adapter is set up to uh, it's got a hole in it. Put your wire through it, tighten it down, and then it would go on the end of a Go on, a, go on the end of a uh, destination reached. Well, I'll be there. Oh, here it is. Be ready for the next mission. Meet me when you need me. Got everything but. That's okay. Anyway, this is a. Uh, is a barrel connector so this would then hook on the barrel connector like that and you screw your coax into it so you could take and go and go to ground with it so that's as easy as an antenna to put up as you, you can uh, the metal gauge wire you use do I the wire you have in your hand yeah does that matter what gauge you use no no, uh, I've made antennas out of, out of, uh, you know what, well, I'm going to trip over this before, yeah. the night, before the night's over. Yeah. I've made antennas out, out of wire this doesn't make any difference. The bigger the gauge, the better. But, you know, whatever you've got, whatever the situation, I'll tell my story. I went to the 96 Olympics in Atlanta, and uh, they put us up in a multi-story hotel. I was on about the third or fourth, fifth floor, something like that, and I wanted to operate my radio. I took my radios with me. I got up on this, and I, I, I can, what I can do for an antenna. So what I did was I had aluminum window frames. So I went to the hardware store, and I bought me a eight, ten inch bit, eighth inch bit, and I drilled through the corner of the uh, aluminum frame. Went down to the bar and got one of their little straws, plastic straws, and put that in there. And I went to Radio Shack and bought a roll of that 30 gauge wire wrap wire. Wrapped some solder on the end of it, fed it through the, the over the side, hooked it up to my tuner, and that's how I operated the whole time I was in Atlanta. And it works, you know. Not very efficient, but for what I was doing, it worked great. So, so anyway, that's that's uh, that's kind of the, the idea of a vertical. Uh, you can, you know, you can make stuff like this. That, you know, you can bring your if you got a long wire, you can bring your long wire in here. Go down to the ground, and that 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 nice wire right there is, is sturdy enough that it's not going to come down any any time. Uh, you can uh, if you want to use bare wire. This is great stuff. 
it's uh, just copper. I don't even know what gauge it is. Probably about 18, 20 gauge wire. But it's solid and you, it makes good antenna wire too. Uh, I use 14 gauge electrical wire. What I use. Insulated. Okay. Multi, uh, multi core. Hmm? Multi core. Stranded. Yeah, yeah, it's stranded, yes. You can, use, you can use solid if you want to. You know, there's nothing wrong with, with it. It's just, it's just awful hard to, to handle. So I, I definitely go the, go the route of, uh, of uh, stranded wire. And uh, matter of fact, I had to have some solid wire. And I looked around the shack, I didn't have a roll of it at all. I'd go by a roll. Uh, okay, so now we'll talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about uh, dipoles. I think I showed you last, last time some of the, uh, things that you can do to keep from spending a lot of money uh, on center insulators. Okay, now there's, there's the premium of them all right there. It's about $75 for that. Now it's, it's great because it, it has eye bolts and coax goes into it and it's all sealed and it should never ever leak and get water in it. But Neither will that. Neither will that. That's another 15 bucks for that. Okay, that's mm, maybe maybe $2. Uh, so we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk a little bit about, I have pre, I have pre, uh, I have pre-drilled this one. And I've mounted the SO239 in there. You look and see, it's got a got a solder lug there for the for the the shield. And you would take and uh, well, in, in in this case, you would take your two wires. This one is built. This one is built like kind of like this one. You can see this one's the same way. It's I've taken the two wires and I've, and I've soldered one to the center and one to the sh sh shield, shield and brought the wire out. Of course, I glue all that together, seal up these holes, and then I, this one doesn't have a hole, but I did with them. Oh, I didn't drill a hole in there for that one either. But I, um, Anyway, you drill a hole in the you drill a hole in that in the side after you get it all together like this. Fill it with epoxy resin, and there's no way it's going to get wet inside. No way it's going to come apart. No way these are going to come unscrewed. And then you just cut this and run your wires in there, and then wrap this around the wires, and you got a center conductor, center insulator. That's the that's the easiest thing to do, and you know, put it. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be neat neat like that or like this one. This is a commercial grade one. Uh, no, I guess I did build that. One. This is the commercial grade one, and I showed you last last week where this one got hit by lightning. Uh, the insides of it still good, it still works. The antenna still worked. So, uh, so you can build that for, gosh, a few pennies. A little bit of work, a few pennies. And they work just as well as this one and that other one, if not better. Uh, even simpler. <laughs> okay. Drill your cup, drill your, cup, drill your two holes through there, put the wires through it. Uh, bring your coax up, spread it out, wrap it around there. I mean, that's about maybe 50 cents. And it works. Uh, there's all sorts of things. Uh, insulators. 
insulators. You can uh, okay. Well, here's here you go. There's one built very similar to that. Except I just uh, I'm not overly confident of this. It's just glued in there, and uh, but you can see the you can see the epoxy resin in there that seals it up. And that's what was used. I pulled this out off of an antenna that I had up. Uh, insulators. If you want to spend money, you want to spend money. These are getting more and more expensive. And now they're made out of plastic. They're not made out of porcelain. And that works just as well. Okay. It works just as well. You can buy a 10 foot piece of this electron, electrical conduit, and you can make several hundred of these. Uh, and if you want to, you can even make the center insulator. Bring your coax up and loop it through. Put a cable tie over it, take the ends, and go up into your, thread your wire through there. Let's wrap it up. You can put a you can put an eye bolt. Well, I got one in here somewhere. Uh, you can put an eye bolt in it if you want to. That's up. You know, it's up you. I, I, if it were me, I'd just drill another hole through the center and tie the rope on it. Take it on up. Do you still need a ballum or a fine on or whatever you want to call them for those? Why do you, why do you want to use a ballum? Well, I'm asking. I don't okay. know. Okay. Let me let me tell you. If, you. if you've got if you've got RF coming back in your shack from that antenna, then yeah, you might want to put a one-to-one -one balance on it. Okay, but if you don't have the RF coming back in your shack, they don't need it. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I've done the experiment. I've got a, I've got a couple of RF ammeters, and I can put an RF ammeter on a, on a, between the, the radio and the, and the antenna, and I can see how many RF amps are going out on transmit. Uh, the experiment I did was 100 watts, and I had one amp going straight to the antenna, put a ballon in there, and I only got 750 mils at the antenna. So the ballon is eating up part of your signal. So that's why I say, unless you absolutely have to have a ballon to keep, take care of RF, I wouldn't do it unless you're trying to use the ballon to tune the antenna. Like you, you've got an antenna that's like 600 ohms and you want to get that, that, that impedance down to something that your tuner can handle, so you put a 4 to 1 in there and drop it down to about 125, something it can handle. Now, that's, that's a different story. And I've got a course on balance that we'll talk about if we want to, if we want to get into them. Uh, some of you guys don't have a lot of space, okay? You can take a piece of PVC and run a coil like that, put, put it on the end end and figure out how much you wind on here. Then figure out what, how much wire that you need to make it the quarter wavelength. Put this on the end of it on both ends. Short it. It'll, it'll distort your pattern some, but it'll work as an antenna just as well. And that's that's that. It's, those are simple to make. You just take a piece of PVC, drill some holes in it. Yep. Turn around so you can see the holes. Drill some holes in it to to, to bring the wire in. Bring the wire in, wrap it around, take the end of it, put a hole in the end of it. Okay. And then you run, stick the wire, come out to this hole, glue those together, whatever size you need. You need a longer one, you can do longer. So uh, does that act like an inductor when you've got wound? Yeah. Kind of like yes, that? exactly. <clears throat> RF wise, it it it's the same. It's the RF looks at the entire inductance of that wire. Now, winding it in the coil changes the inductance a little bit, but that's why you, you know, you use an antenna analyzer to, you know, shorten it, lengthen it, and that's another good thing. That's another good thing, using. Uh, what do with it? Uh, using these, you know, you can. And then, oh well, it's too long, so you can undo it, cut a little bit off. Well, you can't do it once you wrap it around that, that other insulator. It makes it look trouble. And I was making so many of them, I built me a jig.
put it in there and drill my three holes there, drill my big hole there. I need a little jig, and that's I think that's a piece of one inch aluminum. And so, because I was building a bunch of man, I probably built over 100 when we were in business. And so I'd go through and do eight or ten of these and go to work. So, all right. So now what we gotta gotta look at is um, how do I how do I do it? How do I put all this stuff together? All right. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use this as our example. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Now you've got a you've got a pretty good deal. Let me see. Let me see yours. Now what he did is he took a double banana to a BNC and put an adapter on it, and then he just took his wires and wrapped it around the post and tightened it down. Uh, and that's that'll work. I'm not so sure if you put it up and leave it up permanent that, that the rain and, and stuff would not be a problem with that. No, that's a fair weather antenna. Yeah, it's definitely not it's definitely not 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 to uh, uh, be put up and let left up because of the the other. All right, let me get some let me get some wire here. Uh, and we are going to talk we are going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about a fan antenna too. Uh, I've heard several people talk about it and say, oh man, I love, love a fan antenna. So we're going to talk about that. Okay, so. And what I like to do, and this is hard to do sometimes, I like to strip it back pretty far. Come on. And I would take this and run it in there, twist it over, and I'm, I twist it, I make sure it's long enough that you get about, about four good twists on there. Then take the other and twist it around it and solder. Now, I, I, I'm not going to solder tonight, okay? So you do that and do the other side, and I know this is probably simplicity for some of you guys, you've probably already done this. So that makes your antenna, okay? Center conductor. Now, what about what about the uh, what about? So, what I like to do is I like to come in. And you know what? No, okay. Uh, all right, there we go. I think this is number twelve. And I think these are number 14 holes, but we'll make it work. And then you go down through this one. Sometimes your my, my old my old fingers are not uh, able to hang on to this wire like like it should. I don't know if that 
I've got a big pair of pliers in there, but I don't. So. And then you would do the same thing down here, except this one gets kind of hard to to do. So you just what I do is I just push it in there as far as I can because it doesn't have to be neat. I mean, it's going to be up in the air and nobody's going to see it anyway. Okay. Then you tie your, and that's not going to come out, guys. I don't care how strong you pull it, it's not. And actually three holes is probably one too many. Uh, and that makes it easy if you're unsure of how the length is, because you can take it back out if it's too long. And you always want to cut your antennas long. You, 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 it's a whole lot easier to cut off than it is to, screw, to paste back on. Okay. So, that's that's the easy construction for a dipole antenna. There's nothing, uh, nothing hard about it. It's not rocket science. You know, it's not even auto mechanics. It's just simple twisting wires together. Now, building if you're going to build this, so yeah, that's a little bit of there's a little bit of time involved in there. Uh, if you want to buy one of the commercially made ones, that's fine. Uh, you can even, if you want to, you can buy a big old ballon like this. Okay, and this is for an in-fed wire. It's not for an antenna. I didn't bring that one. But the uh, problem with this is, if you put it out in the middle of your span, it's going to sag. So if you get something like this, you got to put it up against the building or up against the pole or something. Let's talk. Let, let, while we're on dipoles, let's talk about fan dipoles. Everybody know what a fan dipole is? You ever seen a fan dipole? Probably you have with fan dipoles. Is they're a pain in the butt to keep together. And the reason is to make a good fan dipole, you have got to fan out. And so, what do you use to fan them out with? Well, in this case, I've got some little quarter inch PVC that I drilled holes full for. So we would you would take your longest aha. Uh -huh. I did not make these holes long. Okay. All right. That's right. We use some of this smaller gauge wire. Uh, now, just for our benefit, I'm going to tie a knot in this so it doesn't doesn't come out. down the line oh that's not the hole that's why it would go through you would go down the line so far and secure this so that it wouldn't go any further and for right now I'm just going to do this what I did is uh, I used bare wire I did not use insulated wire and I took wire and wrapped around here and went around and wrapped around over there and soldered it so that it wouldn't do it. Okay. So then you come down here to your next, say that's 80 meters. So it would be it would be approximately 62 feet of wire. And so you come down here to do 40 meters. And you would go down to the I don't know why you won't find that hole over there. Uh, so you would go down here to the second. And 
and do the same thing. He would feed it. But here's the deal. See? I think we picked up the wrong one. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta play. You gotta, you gotta have somebody to hold it, see, to keep it, to keep it together. Okay, so we'll just. That's pretty close, so we'll just. All right, come on. There we go. So now you got. The first section of fan, okay. So we're going to say you're, you're at the end of the 80 meter. You're, you're going to do the 40 meter. Uh, so now you're going to have to go. This one is for, we're doing the 40 meter side. So we would come down. This is not in proportion, by the way, guys. Okay, well, if you want to go up there, that's fine too. So now you got, you're at the end of the 80. So now we're right here, and we're at the end, we've got 40. So now you're going to go through and do the same thing again down here for 20 meters. Okay, and if you want to do 10 meters, you can go down here. You don't have to do 15 because you can run 15 off the 40 meter side of it. Now, the problem with this is that once you get all these things together, you got to keep them tight, you know, and that's what the problem is with the fan dipole. It's a pain when you get it up, but when you get it up, it works great. Works great, and of course these would be a lot longer. They would go down here to whatever center insulator that you've got, and they'd all tie onto here, and then you plug your coax into it and go. And the idea of a fan dipole is that it will only go to the antenna of resonance. So if you've got 80, 40, 20, 10 up there and you put 20 meters on it, it's only going to go to the 20 meter part of the dipole. And it's where it's resonant. So at 15, it, it, of course, you're going to be using it on 40 and it's uh, about a three quarter wavelength uh, dipole on 15, but it works. It works. So that's the fan dipole, and I asked a question Saturday. I was talking to some guys out there Saturday. Now, here's the, here's what I use. They're fiberglass rods. A little expensive. A little bit of trouble to drill the holes in it. You gotta have a drill press to do it. But they're and it's a little heavier than these. But these, I don't see any reason why these these wouldn't work perfectly. Uh, if you want to put up a fan dipole. I got that chair for a minute. <clears throat> Well, they're just the supports any for the wire. So oh yeah, they, they, well, what, or anything what you would do, the best way to do it, in my opinion, I've never, I've not used a fan dipole, okay? Uh, although the, the, the theory of it is, is, is definitely, I mean, it's just three, you're just using one, one common uh, center, center insulator for three different antennas or four different antennas. So uh, it, it's just four dipoles, so it's good. Problem is, is keeping them. You know, you'd have to pretty much have a a tag line on each, the end of each one of those fans coming down to the same point, to, so you can keep them all as you know level. Because if you don't, first good wind comes along, it's going to wrap around on itself and all that good thing. So you're going to have to have something to keep those to keep those uh, out like that. Yes. Pam, I, I thought I overheard you talking to somebody before the meeting or, or something about you'd try some in-fed pathways yeah. and had, had good luck yeah. with them. What yeah, that's what this is. This is this is this is a uh, this is a ballon used for an in-fed long wire. When we when we moved out of the uh, the uh, base housing out the base, and the city of Millington gave us 
a room on the uh, second floor of their training center. <clears throat> I uh, figured all we were going to have is long wires. So I did some research and I said, okay, we'll, this, we'll give this a try. Well, as it turned out, they worked very well. Very well. I love them. I've got three of them. Yeah. It works very well. Quiet? Are they quiet? Yeah. So this one, I've got one, I've got one out there that's 140 feet. Okay. And it goes, if you're looking out this way of the building, it goes off this way. And then I've got a second one that's 200 feet and it's going off this way. They're about 90 degrees apart. And uh, that's what we use until, and this is the balance. Now these are a little expensive. These are 120 bucks. And uh, you can buy it with the wire and everything if you want to, but why why spend wire that you can buy just as cheaply at, at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's? Especially if you're a veteran, you can get 10 percent off at Lowe's. That's right. You can get it at you can get it at Home Depot too. They follow the suit after a while, uh, and they work really well. It's my opinion, and I'm not an opponent. I'm not a proponent of long wires. Never have. That those are those are fairly quiet. Uh, surprised at that. And uh, if you use if you use insulated wire, then you don't get the wind noise of the wind blowing across the bare wire. You can use insulated wire. So they are they're a little bit quieter. Uh, so and they and you build them. You know, it comes with an insulated. This now the only thing is this needs to be as close to ground as you can get it. So you can do an inverted L, which is still just an in-fed long wire, okay? Have this close to ground because it's going to use it's going to use the ground for the other side of the antenna. And if you don't have it close to ground, it's going to use the shield of the coax. So that's going to bring that RF back into your shack. And we had a problem with that at the base. I had to buy I had to buy two chokes to put on the two long wires to keep the RF out. But they work great. I mean, as far as I can, many times have I used, have used them. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very impressed with them. And uh, so, if you don't, if you don't mount this close to ground, you got to get a choke to go with it. What do you consider close? Within four or five feet. Okay. So this ought to, if you if you take it long wire up to the say the soffit of your house and then out, this ought to go right down where the ground rod is, right next to it. Okay, and so this is all waterproof. Uh, and the ground, of course, goes there. They even give you the terminals. And at nine to one, four to one, uh, I'd have to, I'd have to go back and look at my notes because I don't remember now exactly how you figure out nine to one, four to one. I think it's by the length that you, of wire that you use. The longer you get, the higher the impedance. So you're going to go nine to one, bring it down to close to four to one. I mean, close to 50 ohm. That would be uh, a uh, 450 ohm impedance. You'd use a nine to one, get it down to 50 ohms. Four to one, uh, say 200 ohms, bring it down to 50 ohms, just depending on the length of the wire and what the impedance is. But that all comes with this. It'll give you an instruction sheet and it'll tell you uh, how to do it. And what make is that? Myantennas.com. Okay. Uh, you can buy them already ready, ready to go if you want to, if you want to pay the extra money. Uh, I'm cheap. I ain't got a whole lot of money. Did you make the chokes or did you buy them? No, I bought the chokes. They sell the chokes, but their chokes are a little expensive. You can, their chokes are about a hundred bucks. Mm. And you can go to, you can go to MFJ and buy MFJs and they're about 70, 80 bucks. And you can make your own choke if you want to. Sometimes all you got to do is put about, uh, get eight or ten, uh, Inductors, uh, ceramic, I mean, uh, 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 iron inductors, and just put them on the coax and tape them up. You, sometimes you can you can illuminate that way, but that looks tacky, so I just I wanted something to look at halfway decent at the base, so I got the chokes, put them inside the the box that they let us bring the antennas in with. So, uh, and it took care of, it took care of the RF. It, it it was it was a good it was well well done. And that's what you're operating on now. On 40 meters, no, well, actually on 40 meters, once, once we got the beam up, once we got permission to put the tower up, uh, I'm pretty much on the beam because I've got a 40 meter add-on kit. 
on the A4S. So we pretty much used the beam all we were always on, the 40 meters is usually all we're on. So for for the Mars stuff. And uh, now we used it. We did use the uh, long wires this weekend for the other ticket. We ran two transmitters. And when we did field day out there, we did the same thing, but we had to buy, we had to buy uh, uh, bandpass filters because the two radios weren't but 50 feet apart. And the antennas were 30 feet apart. So we had a problem with 40 meters getting on 20 and so vice versa. So we did buy some bandpass filters and put them in and that, that took care of the problem. So. Now, what, what do you want to do if you want to make a multi-band antenna? You can make your own uh, well, yeah, sure. the OL, yeah, what they put it, you know, like for instance on the A4S you see the, see the, that, the little bumps out there that, and that's what's in there, there's a coil like this and a capacitor. And, uh, but you can make your own using PVC and coax. And you make your own capacitor. I don't know whether you can see it, but you, you, hook, you hook this up. One end of it here is hooked up to the shield. This end is hooked up to the center conductor and the two are put together and that get, makes it a capacitor and an inductor at the same time. And you can tune it. You have to play with it a while to get the exact, exact number of turns and everything else to uh, to get it. So you can make a multi-band antenna, putting this up, put it in in there, run 40 on one side, 20 on the other, or run 80 on one side, 40, and then go down and put 20. You can do whatever you want to with it, but you can you can make them. And I forget now. I made this a long time ago. And it's a little bit complex. It's probably it's probably not as complex now with the antenna analyzers. But back when I made this, all you had was a dip meter, and you put this thing together, and you put the dip meter here close to it, and you tuned it and see where it dipped, and that'll tell you what frequency it was. Okay. And what this does is it blocks the frequency, like 40 meters. It blocks 40 meters right here. So whatever it's from here back to the center conductor, that's the length of a 40 meter antenna. You go to 20 meters, it doesn't block it. So it goes through the coil to a, a 20 meter side, okay? And uh, well, 40 and 20 is probably a bad example, say 20 to 15. And uh, <clears throat> so you can do it, but it's, it's, a little, it's a little, that's as far as I got with it, okay? I just decided, eh, it's a little bit too complex for what I want to do. Plus the fact that wire antenna and these things are not really heavy, but it would definitely be a sag. So I never did, never get, did get to it. And you can buy, you can buy, where is it? Here it is. You can buy a commercial. Short car, short, shorty, shorty car. This came off of a uh, a shorty. I think it was a shorty forty antenna that got the package got destroyed in the shipping, and so I used to have two of these. I don't know where the other one is, and uh, but I've never put it up. Now I did. <clears throat> I, I do know that that coil on the end works. Because at one time I had a 160 meter dipole up. I got woods out behind my house, so I had time, plenty, of, plenty of space to put that side of the antenna out behind my house. But coming towards the other side, I didn't have enough. And uh, so I would come to, there was a, a light pole out there, so I'd come to the light pole and down and uh, put a coil, coil like this step shorter down there and, and got it to resonate and it's great except my gas and water didn't like that <laughs> they kept cutting it down so finally one day I got ticked went out there with a post hole digger and I dug me a hole right beside there right beside the light pole put me in a piece of uh, fence rail for a mast painted it white and then 
put a different coil in that different coil in the antenna and just and I operated on 160 just like that so I do know that this does work okay uh, I just wound this one the other night so it's not hard to do and this is solid number 14 solid and that's that's what you ought to use to wind this coil because uh, uh, stranded won't stay good and tight like this okay and that's not as tight as I'd really like it and it if you want to, after you get one built and get it up, or you can varnish it so that, you know. Because see, if it moves, if it, if, it, if it expands a little bit, it's gonna change the impedance. You might go out there on a hot sunny day and the, the antenna will tune different than a cold day because these things expand. So so good, and once you get it up there, just put some, put some uh, varnish on it so that they don't move. Okay. Yeah. Questions? Yes. This might <clears throat> be a good time to mention the uh, the formula in calculating your legs if you're at eye poles and your other antennas. Yeah, 468 uh, divided by the frequency in megahertz. That'll give you the that'll give you the rough uh, lengths of of a half wave. Then you divide that by two to get you two quarter wave things. Um, yeah. Now, if you look at the books, they'll put, say it's 492 divided by the frequency. Well, that's for a horizontal dipole. And a horizontal dipole will have 72 ohm, approximately 70, 71 to 72 ohm center uh, uh, inductance. You bend the ends down for inverted V, that changes the impedance in the middle. So if you're going to do an inverted V, and then it changes it to 50 ohms and you can shorten, you can shorten your, uh, your leaf. Now, always make them long. You know, I would say once you get to the length, add two feet to it. And, uh, <clears throat> and tune it. You can tune. You can tune it. You don't have to have an antenna analyzer. You can buy one of these off eBay for 10, 15 bucks. And it's real simple. You get transmit on low power. Once you get it up, you look at the SWR. And if it's high, then you gotta say, well, that's all right, I'm gonna change frequency. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start at the middle of the band. And I'm gonna so I'm gonna go up to, to the top edge of the band, see what the SWR is. If I go up the top edge of the band and uh SWR goes down, then I have cut it short because it's resonant short. Uh, if SWR goes up, then it, it, which it should, then you're going to go down to the lower edge of the band uh, and see and if, if the SWR goes down, then it's too long. So you cut a little bit off, do the same thing again until you get to where the SWR is about even. Now you, you, you're not going to probably ever get a one-to-one, -one, okay? On HF, if it's under two, it's fine. VHF, you got to be under three, okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said that backwards. HF, if it's under three, you're fine. If you're getting on VHF, UHF, well, VHF under two, and I don't, I don't play with VHF, UHF, so I don't really... Couldn't really tell you, but I'll just say you probably one and a half. Now, <clears throat> three, uh, a three to one SWR on these transistorized rigs will cut the power back a little bit. You may not get a hundred out, you may only get 75 or 80. Mm -hmm. They do that so that you're not heating up the transistors. So I wouldn't stay with three. If it's three to one at the top edge of the band in, in 1.5 or 1.4 at the lower edge of the band, and it's, you know, you, you you need to you need to do some some changing here and get it changed out. So I would get it to, uh, and this uh, this thing is not well. It does show SWR just up to three, okay, but it also shows the reflected power, okay. So if you're putting out 100 watts and you can adjust it with here, so the 100 watts is the max on a scale, okay. 
and you're getting less than 10 watts reflected, you got a good SWR. Okay, because that would show you down here in the SWR would be below 1.5 to 1. So if you got one that doesn't have an SWR scale on it, you can do it with just a forward and reflected power. So you don't need an expensive antenna analyzer. You guys are probably not going to make but one, two, three antennas in your lifetime. So why spend four, five, six hundred bucks on an on antenna analyzer you're not going to use very often. Okay, now, somebody like me that plays with antennas and built a lot of antennas, uh, I, I've ended up buying three of them. And uh, I tried to sell two of them on but didn't get any bites. So, uh, you'd really, like I say, it's, it, and, and, when I, and, and when I was in the, when I got my license, you know, I've been licensed 55 years, I guess, something like that. Uh, you didn't have you didn't have meters that, that showed SWR. They showed forward and reverse, and there's a formula. There's a formula power power out over power in that kind. Of, there's a formula that you can figure out the SWR if you want to know what the SWR is. So we tuned antennas by maximum forward current, minimum reflected current, because that's what SWR is. Okay. So if you've got 100 watts out, you got less than 10 watts coming back, man, you've got a good SWR. Solder it and go home. Okay? So, and that's why you, that's why when you build these antennas, you, you build them with two feet long. And here's another thing. It, this is not, you won't find hardly anybody that will talk about this, but Copper wire has has a velocity factor, okay? About the only place that you find the velocity factor is when you're dealing with coax. RG, RG58 or RG8X has a velocity factor of about 0.66. Uh, 213 and, and the bigger coaxes might, might go up as much as a 0.9. Okay? Now what that does is that if you're... <coughs> If you, uh, uh, I don't want to wire it on the board. I'm going to have to clean it, but I'm going to. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let, let's say you, you put up an 80 meter antenna and you use a copper wire and it's got a velocity factor of 0. 0.76. So you, you, your calculation comes up to 30 for a, uh, 63 feet. Okay, that's an electrical, that's the that's thing. Now you've got to multiply it times 0.66. Okay, and now that's going to bring it down to a shorter value. Okay, most people don't, don't think about that. Well, it won't be a 0.66 anyway. Uh, I, uh, I was talking about coax this way, but this is going to be... Uh, it's going to have a velocity factor of, say, six. So you're going to have to you're going to have to uh, zero six. So you're going to have to multiply it by zero six, and come out with uh, what, eighteen thirty-seven. About you're going to come out a little less than than, than what that sixty-three feet is. And uh, that's be, that, that has to do with the. With, uh, especially on uh, uh, insulated wire, it has to do with the insulation on the wire. But you won't find, you won't hardly find any any uh, information on the internet on the velocity factor of solid copper wire. So what I do is, or what I try to do, see, I knew that was going to be. I take about I take about six to eight percent off of the length to start with to get it to resonant. And uh, now, if you if you if you're making a, a, a dipole out of wire, just put it up. Do your you use your watt meter to analyze it. And if it looks like it's too long, cut some off. Don't cut a bunch. You know, on an on a 80 meter antenna, I wouldn't cut more than six inches at a time. 
And when it got down to where it was almost correct, then I'd go back maybe cut two or three inches at a time. Can you take the end of the wire and bend it over and wrap it back around itself to shorten it? You can, but that's not really... Unless you solder it? Not really good. Uh, because if you bring it back over itself until you get to a point where you can solder that to the, to the other length, yep. that bend is part of the antenna. Mm -hmm. So if you get it right and go in there and bend it over and do that, then you're going to put it off. And uh, don't get anal about it. Get it, get it below, get it below. I, I stop it when it's below 1.5. And if I can't get it below 1.5, it's 1.6, and that's what it is. Now, any other questions? All right, let's talk about the last antenna I'm going to talk about tonight. It'll be just about right. Horizontal loop. Okay. Horizontal loop is a great antenna if you've got space to put it up. Uh, one, uh, 1005 divided by the frequency in megahertz will give you the full wavelength of the uh, antenna. Uh, and now you can go to, and I'm going to put a plug out for tractor supply. I don't like to plug anything, but you can go buy these. These are electric fence insulators, okay? And it works real good because you can take your you can take and tie your your string that you're gonna pull it up in a tree with around here like this. And I'm just gonna use a granny knot for the heck of it. Two granny knots. Anyway, yeah. Pull it up with like this, and then you can run your wire through the center. And then when you get it all up there in the way you want to, then you can pull the wire and get it square or whatever. The wire will go through there like that. And it makes it really, it really works really well, and uh, because first one I put up, I used I used insulators like those dog bone insulators I showed you earlier, wherever I put, wherever I put it. Well, anyway, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, and I twisted them together and when I got it all up man that one one side sagged the other side was spanjo string tight and everything else and it was a pain so I, when I took it down and did this I wasted some wire but that's okay you sometimes have to waste you know waste a little bit to get it right and uh, <clears throat> and depending upon how you want to if you're going to if you're going to put a ballon on it this needs to go in the corner or someplace where you can mount it. Okay? No. Because otherwise it's going to sag. This thing weighs, weighs, pretty good, weighs a pretty good bunch. So you don't want it to sag. So the other thing you can do you can feed it with ladder line. Okay? But what you got to do, you got to take into consideration that when you put this on your insulator, and in this, in this is going to be part of the antenna until it gets down to wherever you terminate it, into a ballon, preferably on the side of your shack or something like that. So, they, so you got to you've got to plan when you build the loop. You got to plan for this being in the middle. Now you can do the same in coax. But the coax still is part of the is still part of the antenna, so you you still got to take that into consideration. Uh, Twenty five feet off the ground is great if you just want to talk within say five hundred miles. 
because the major lobes of that antenna are going to be like this, okay? You go up 35 feet, they're going to come down a little bit. And you get up about 40, 50 feet, then they may be down here in 8, 10, 12 degrees, which is good DX, okay? So it depends on what you want to do with it. Mine's up, like I say, 25 feet, because all I want to, all I do is I, I communicate on Mars. In other words, I want to talk to Kentucky, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, North and South Carolina, Florida. That's the only places I'm going to talk to with that particular antenna. And uh, so I don't want to, I don't care if it goes 1,000 miles. I just want it to go five, 600 miles. And, uh, but it's a good antenna. And it's something that you can put it. I've got a 75 by uh, 75 by maybe a maybe 90 foot backyard, and I got a couple of trees out. I got a, a, a forest behind me, so I've got a couple of trees out there, 10 or 15 feet, and I put up masts on the uh, gables of my end of my house, and I go from there out to the trees, and it works great. I had I had one up. I had one up that would go to uh, go down as far as 3.3, .3, and uh, it went out a couple of trees a little further out. The <clears throat> the thing about a horizontal loop, the more efficient it is, is is uh, the inside area of the loop. So a horizontal loop antenna, the best it's going to be would be a complete circle at whatever height above ground you want to go. So if you have to do it, you know, we, we, it, look, you can do anything. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be a square. Uh, it can do anything. And uh, so it works pretty good. Now, <clears throat> I got two pieces of advice. Well, maybe one. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not an expert. Okay, I don't have an engineering degree. I didn't go to college. Uh, everything that I've talk, talked about tonight, I've done, and I know they work. If you get on the internet and <laughs> pull up horizontal loop antenna, you're gonna get 30,000 hits on it. And every one of those 30,000 hits is gonna have a different opinion. And so after you get through reading through the first 100 or so, you're gonna say, I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, I don't know who to believe. And like I've told you tonight, they work. Just do it this way, and it works. And so it's all these antennas I have done, I have used, except for the fan antenna. I'll be perfectly honest, we have not used one of them because I could see right off the bat <laughs> what a pain it was going to be to keep it up. And one of the guys that worked with us Saturday on the Armed Forces Day, he has one up. And the minute I said that, he goes, <laughs> so it's obviously true. Uh, now, I have seen a well like this one. Uh, okay. This one is a 10 and 15 meter antenna I built in the field. As you can see, it's not very pretty. It wasn't built, designed to, uh, we got out on field day. Uh, with a group that was going to come out and work 10 to 15 meters and they didn't have an antenna. So I said, all right, I'm going to build them a two, two, two band antenna. So that's what I've got. I've got a 10 meter dipole and the white, I guess, or maybe, yeah, and the white and a 15 meter with black wire. And we just tied ropes on each one of them, set, set, put it up a tree, and that's what they work field day on. So you, it's not, it's not pretty. It's kind of ugly, and uh, but it worked, and that's all that. That's all that's. That's the whole idea of this is you got to put something together that works. Uh, and if you sit and listen to to everybody's opinion, you're going to get really confused. Uh, and like I say, I'm not going to tell you I'm an expert. Uh, I don't know about Smith charts and all that stuff. I don't care. Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of engineer guys out there that like to do that kind of stuff and got the equipment and everything and the opportunity to do it. And that's all well and good. 
but I want to build an antenna that works. That's all I care about. So if you put one up and you're satisfied with it, it does what you want it to do, then hey, go with it. Don't don't try to make improvements, you know. Don't fix it unless it's broke. Now, let's talk about soldering some of these uh, some of these connections. Uh, you're not gonna have very good luck soldering with this size soldering iron, okay? Just, this thing this just does not have enough heat retention because what you gotta do is you gotta put this against what you're soldering. You gotta heat that connection up, okay? To where it gets to hot enough to melt solder. So this is not, this is good for circuit board work and that kind of stuff. Uh, This one's a little bit better. Uh, you can solder uh, small connections, antenna connections like that with this. It takes a little extra because again, same same thing. This is a little hotter iron, has a little bit more heat retention, but it's still not not great. If you're going to be building a lot of antennas or soldering PL259s on cable. This is what you need. Wow. Okay, it's 350 watts. And once it gets hot, that's why I wasn't going to bring it and plug it in down here. Once it got warm, it takes forever to cool off. And you got to have something to set it on. So you can set it. Uh, where I got that, I probably picked it up at a ham fest someplace. I've got one. Of, it's a cage that you're sticking in at the house. I didn't bring it because it weighs a ton. Uh, now when we get into, and I'm sure we're going to get into it sometime, we're going to get into PL259s, putting them on cable. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's going to come up. We will be using this. That's why the pans. We can put it over there so we don't drop solder on the nice carpet and we don't drop solder on these nice desks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I even hey, you made a mess. I because this is a nice this is a nice venue, and I don't want to mess it up. Okay, yes, it is. Uh, I mean, I've taught in lots of different places. This one's great, and uh, so uh, that's just a reminder to make sure you don't leave any mess when you when you leave the position there. So that's that's about all I'm going to talk about soldering irons until we get into uh, now. I, I, if you want, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, we can do a, a class on soldering if if you need it. Uh, we got to decide what we're going to do next month. Uh, this is a pretty quick. Uh, on, on construction techniques, but there's just not, it would be great if we had, we were in the outside and we could build an antenna, and hang, hang it up on something, put an antenna analyzer to it, play with it. You can come to my house any day you want. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Now here's the thing, if, if people talk, ask about grounding. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we got 15 minutes. <clears throat> This kind of this stuff, like the one I've got right here, I scrounged off of a, a, a scrap heap when they were doing some changes in our central office when I was working. This you can buy at Home Depot and everything. It's just a grounding point for goes in electrical box, electrical box, and these are just PVC caps. So you can do that, and if you, I don't know what you've got, but out the base we've got a wooden wooden table that we're on. I just screwed it right through the table, bring my ground wire in, and I just bring all my other ground wires in here and attach it up. So that's, you can get it. This, you can, you can get a small one, okay? Uh, you can, you might want to glue it to, to, to a desk if it's something that's not, you don't care about. You drill a hole all the way through it, put, the, put this bolt all the way through, and just give you a place. 
that's three, and this is how it comes. If you buy it, that's the bigger one. They have smaller ones. And, uh, and I just had these PVC caps laying around. And so there they are. See, there's what, that's what the one looks like. That's not been had a hole. Now, when you're building, this is something I definitely want to show you. This will be the last thing we'll, 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 uh, uh, we'll adjourn after this. How do I get the hole in the middle <laughs> over here? Okay, have you ever looked at a, uh, a square set, engineer's square set uh, with the square, and you see this crazy looking thing like that? That's how you get, put it in there, draw your line, 90 degrees, draw your line, where they intersect, that's where you drill your hole. And if you buy a good good set, it comes with a square and, and this, and I think it's three different items, it'll come up with, the, with that. You can even do it on an uneven surface, it's just a little, a little more difficult. See, that's a rounded, rounded top. It's a little more difficult, but if you do it, you know, you just do it right. You can get it pretty close to the center. Uh, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but it just about intersects halfway there. Yeah, I got a little off on that side. That's probably the drill. The drill probably <laughs> crawled, crawled just a little bit. But, so. That's that's a little something that you can. You ought to have a good. You ought to have a good engineer's solid metal square uh, to do this kind of stuff with. Because the other side, oh, you can get to me if you're building something, make sure it's square. Uh, so that's it, guys. Now.